Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Flatland Journey. Today, I'm here with my youngest son, Jason, and we are going to be looking over what non-Flatland bikes, just standard BMX bikes, can be suit suitable for Flatland. So what I have done is I've um, spent quite a bit of time just looking through different BMX shops online, and uh, I really enjoy doing that. Maybe some of you guys do that as well. And I've just kind of kept my eye out for what types of bikes or what bikes, what models um, would be good for Flatland with maybe a little bit of modification or some of them possibly just straight out of the box could be suitable for Flatland. Now, what I've done is I've created a Flatland criteria score sheet so that I can kind of equally um, have a have like a, a standard for judging each of these bikes. And I think it's really important up front that I let you guys know that a bike that might score like a 10 out of 10 for street might score like a zero or a one in uh, a, 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 as a flatland bike, just because it, it's high quality doesn't mean it's really going to be great for flatland. So you might find it a cheap kind of beginner bike that might actually be better for flatland than a pro level bike that is good for the trails or for, for dirt or, or park even. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. First off, I just want to walk you through uh, what some of the things are that I'm looking for. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five categories that I'm looking at. The first category is flatland friendly components. So I'm looking at things like, does this bike have pegs on it? Does this bike have um, skinnier tires or does it have more wide uh, like street street specific tires. Uh, does it have front brakes? Does it have a gyro? Stuff like that. I'm going to be looking also at uh, the drivetrain as another category. So does it have a free coaster hub? Um, does it have cranks that are less than 175 millimeters? The next category I'm looking at is flatland specific geometry. Uh, does it have a low stand over height? Does it have a shorter top tube height? What's the fork offset? What is the head tube angle? What is the chain stay? How tall are the bars? So I'm looking at these types of things to try and find uh, a bike that is gonna be good geometry for flatland. So once again, a bike with like a longer top tube on it might be great for the trails, but not great at all for flatland. A bike with a long chain stay on it might be, um, you know, feel more stable, but it's going to be not that great for doing spins and stuff like a lot of times we're doing when we're riding flatland. Uh, of course, another um, category that we're looking at is the quality of the bikes. So we're looking at what is what is it made out of? Is it full chromoly? Is it partially chromoly? Are the rims double wall? Are they single wall? Um, are the cranks eight spline or 48 spline? And then finally, the last category is weight, because in Flatland, it's not great to have a super heavy bike. You want to really be able to throw it around. And so the lighter the bike, the better it's going to be uh, for Flatland. So those are the categories. Now, as I'm walking through these bikes, you might um, not care so much about certain things. So you might not be someone who wants to ride flatland with brakes. You might want to go brakeless. And so just take note that I am counting um, things like a gyro and front and rear brakes as additional points towards its flatland specific score. So if that doesn't matter for you, then you can take that into consideration and potentially a bike that scored lower might be a better fit for you than a bike that scored higher. So take that into consideration. So let's jump in with our first bike. And these are not necessarily in order from 
best to worst. We're just going to run through them um, and go from there. So the first bike is the Fit STR free, free coaster bike. Okay, um, let's take a look at its components and see how it does with flatland friendly components. This bike does not have front brakes, it does not have a gyro. However, it does have four pegs on it, which is great for flatland. You, if, you, if your bike doesn't come with four pegs on it, you need to get four pegs on it in order to ride flatland. So components wise, this bike scored a four out of seven. Uh, looking at the drivetrain, this bike has a free coaster hub on it, which is really great for flatland. So it gets extra points there. And it has um, shorter cranks, cranks that are less than 175 millimeter, which is also great for flatland. Yeah, that's what you think too, JC boy, huh? That That is going to be great for flatland. So this bike for its drivetrain scored a seven out of seven. Uh, geometry wise, the standover height is not that great for flatland. It's a little bit taller. Uh, it's going to be fine for street and that might not matter to some of you guys, but it does make tricks like tail whips, whiplashes, stuff like that a little bit easier if you've got a smaller, uh, shorter uh, standover height. Um, the top tube height on the medium version, which is what I would recommend for flatland, is 20.5. So that is in the range that I would suggest for flatland. It's a little bit on the bigger side, but it's going to be just fine. It might be um, really what you're looking for if you are a taller rider. Uh, the fourth offset is pretty good for flatland. It's 25 mil millimeters. So um, that is on the, uh, yeah, that's a, a little bit much for Flatland, but it's still within the range of acceptable. It's it's considered pretty normal for street. Um, the head tube angle is great for Flatland on this bike. It is, I believe, 75 degrees or maybe even 75.5, which is going to be great for flatland. And it's got a nice short chain stay. It's 12.75 inches, which is um, very, very short for for street. I mean, it's getting more towards the uh, towards the norm, but for flatland, that's going to be great. And then it's got nice tall bars. I'm just I'm looking for bars that are nine inches or or taller um and uh that's what most people are riding these days but uh not all bikes necessarily come with that so this bike for geometry gets a nine out of ten okay and let's go on to the next category quality um the quality on this bike is not all that great but i would say it's acceptable it has some chromoly, but it is not full chromoly. It has a chromoly front triangle on the frame. Um, from my best research, the front wheel is single wall, but the rear wheel is double wall. So the rear wheel, uh, it's that's the more important wheel. But in flatland, a lot of times you're banging both wheels around. And so a double wall wheel is going to be a lot stronger and so you want that if you can um the bars are i don't think they're full chromoly the website doesn't say and since it doesn't say my guess is that it's not full chromoly and that goes for the fork as well the website doesn't specify uh whether or not it's full chromoly so i'm going to guess it's either a mix of chromoly and high tensile steel or they might just be high tensile steel um it does have sealed bearings front and rear, so that is good. Um, it'll last longer. And the cranks are just eight spline cranks, which are the, the cheaper uh, three piece cranks, but they should be fine. Uh, so the quality gets a four out of 10 score. And then finally, let's look at weight. Um, it is, a little bit under 29 pounds with pegs. So that 
is not all that light. Hey, you boy. Mwah. Love you. You're my little helper, huh? Well, kind of. Sometimes. Anyway, so it, it gets a two out of four for weight. So in total, uh, this bike gets a 6.8 out of 10 rating all around for its flatland score. Okay. Now you'll see that that's not all that bad for the cost. Okay. Cause this bike is actually a really good deal if you find it on sale. Okay. And right now the cheapest place I can find is flatlandfuel.com and it's only $430, 429 99 which is pretty much like a steal for a BMX bike. Um, and the thing about this bike is if you're not concerned with having front, uh, front brakes and a gyro, you can take this bike right out of the box and ride flatland with it and get going. And, uh, it's really got everything you need. The, where it lost a lot of points was in its quality section. So the fit STR is the first bike that we're going to look at. We looked at, okay. The second bike we're going to look at might be a little bit uh, unsuspected, but it's actually the Haro Downtown DLX. And I'll tell you why at the end that I added this bike. OK, um, the Haro Downtown DLX is a lower tier Haro bike. However, um, it scores pretty high in flatland specific or flatland friendly components, okay? It's got front and rear brakes, it's got a gyro, it's got four pegs. So that's more than most bikes have that are flatland friendly parts, okay? Um, it doesn't have skinny tires, it's got uh, 2.4 tires, which are fine for street. And you can ride flatland with 2.4 inch tires, it's just not ideal, okay? So this bike scores a six out of seven for flatland friendly components. Okay, let's look at the drivetrain section. In the drivetrain, uh, it scores a two out of seven because it does not have a free coaster hub. For riding flatland, almost everyone's gonna want a free coaster hub. Um, there are some old school guys who might ride with a cassette. You can do it. It's just that when you ride backwards, your pedals are gonna spin, or are gonna spin with the bike. Your cranks are gonna spin. So um, it does have 170 millimeter cranks, which are gonna be a good size for flatland. Um, and it's just, yeah, the cranks are usually made uh, to fit the size of the bike, but sometimes it's a little bit, it's a little bit weird, and they don't, they're all, they don't always fit well. All right, so let's look at the geometry. Okay. Well, let's look at the the uh, standover height. I actually couldn't find it, but it looks to me like the standover height is going to be um, a little, uh, probably around 8.5 inches, maybe a little bit taller. Uh, so that's that's um, not super great for a flat land, but it's gonna it's gonna be okay. Um, the top tube is within the flatland range, which I'm considering between 19 inches and 20.5 inches. Once again, you might want a bike that's a little bit taller if you ride street as well, or you might want a bike that has a little bit longer top tube. Uh, the fork offset is gonna be a little bit uh, too much for flatland. Uh, I'm not gonna give it a good score on that. I think it's a 32 millimeter. And I'm looking for 25 millimeters or under. The head tube angle is 74.5. So it's a very slack head tube in modern standards. Um, some people really like that. Ooh, my kid just threw up all over the place. Okay. So where were we? Okay. Head tube angle is a little bit slack, I said. Um, and so uh, some people like that for like whiplashes. They feel like it it actually works better for them, but it is going to be harder to get into nose manuals or hang fives and stuff like that. But it might not be a big, big deal to you. Um, the bars, uh, I did not give them a point point this bike, a point for the bars because they're a little bit short. They're 8.5 inches 
and I'm looking for nine inches or higher. So this bike got a three out of 10 for geometry. Let's look at the quality of the bike. This is where it tanked, okay? Um, the bike has no chromoly. It has uh, no double wall rims. There's single wall front and rear. Um, it has high 10 bars, high 10 forks. Um, the only thing that it had going for it is that it had sealed bearings. That was it. Okay, it had sealed bearings in uh, for the front and rear wheel. So it got a 1 out of 10 for quality. And then for the weight, this bike, can, considering that it has a gyro, it has front brakes, rear brakes, and pegs, um, it, it actually scored fine. It got a 2 out of 4. It's a little bit more than 29 pounds, um, which is not light, but for what it is, for the price, it's not bad at all, okay? So this bike overall got a Flatland score of 3.7 out of 10. And you might go, wow, that's really low. That doesn't seem good at all. Um, but here's the, here's the reason I put it on the list. It's only $299.99. So this bike is the cheapest bike you can pretty much get that you can get out there and start riding flatland on and really the only modification you might want to make is putting a free coaster hub on it and you would be good to go so this bike once again um the the cheapest price i could find which is that 299.99 price is at flatlandfuel.com so you uh if you're looking somewhere else, it, it's going to be more. It's going to be closer to 400. If you're going to ride Flatland specific, then you probably want to add a free coaster to it. And it might last you a little while. Just keep in mind that over time, the rims will probably bend. And uh, who knows how long the frame is going to last you. It might last a really long time. Uh, it might not, but you can ride Flatland with this bike straight out of the box. Uh, just keep in mind that the free coaster might get, uh, you might want to get the free coaster. Okay, so the third bike I want to show you guys is the Kink Switch. Okay, the Kink Switch is um, kind of a mid, um, an upper mid tier bike for Kink. And honestly, I think this bike is a really good value um, for Flatland, okay? So this bike, let's look at the Flatland friendly components that it has on it. Um, it's got two pegs, so you will need to add another two pegs to ride Flatland. Um, it doesn't have skinny tires. It doesn't have a gyro. It doesn't have front brakes, which once again, for some of you guys, that might not be a big deal at all. So because it only had the two pegs, I did score it a two out of seven for flatland friendly components. Uh, let's look down at the next category, the drivetrain. This bike uh, gets full points for the drivetrain. Let's see. Okay. So this bike gets full points for the drivetrain. It has a free coaster hub on it, and it also has shorter cranks that are under 175 millimeters. So drivetrain is a seven out of seven. Um, and I, I give a lot of weight to the drivetrain because I think having that free coaster hub is so important. And if you're buying a bike that doesn't have one and you want to add a free coaster hub, you're looking at um, minimum a hundred bucks for like the lowest tier free coaster, okay? And you you could be spending uh, two hundred bucks or more, okay? So you uh, if yeah, it's really good to get a bike that already has a free coaster on it. Let's take a look at the geometry and see how friendly it is for Flatland. The stand of over height is not conducive to flat land, uh, but that might be fine to you. It's just, it's more for street. Um, I'm once again, I'm looking at, I'm looking for something under an 8.5 inch standover height. 
the top tube is 20.75 inches. So that's just outside what I would consider flatland um, conducive. However, for a taller rider, that might be fine. Like I'm 6'2", and I might actually uh, like that. I might actually want that. So you've got guys like Matthias Dondois riding a 21 inch bike for Flatland. So it definitely can work. Um, but I would say it's, it's on the larger side. So I'm not going to give it full points for top tube, uh, length. The fork offset on this is 26 millimeters. So that is also just outside what I would consider, um, good for flatland usually you want it uh 25 millimeters or under some people a lot of people are running zero offset or a minimal offset of like 13 or 15 millimeters so the 26 millimeters is going to be a little much but it is um not a deal breaker okay you can still ride flatland with it no problem it'll work out okay head tube angle is great uh it'd be great for flatland. I think it's 75 or 75.5. Um, either way, it's good for flatland. The chain stay is nice and short. It's under 13 inches. I think it's a 12.75. So one of the reasons I, I actually think this geometry works out well is because it's got such a short rear end. And even though the top tube is a little longer, that shorter rear end kind of makes the bike more compact um there for example like the haro uh downtown which had a shorter top tube had a longer rear end and so in my mind i think that's um it, it's better to have a shorter rear end and a little bit longer top tube especially if you're a taller rider because that gives you more room up front while still keeping it um nice and snappy in the rear uh, and the bars on this bike i believe are 9.5 inches so they're well in the category of a thumbs up for me so i gave this bike a 4 out of 10 for geometry for flatland geometry okay now let's look at the quality this bike killed it with quality it um is full chromoly frame full chromoly forks frame full chromoly bars it's got double wall um, rims front and back it's got uh sealed bearings okay so it got a 10 out of 10 for quality so this bike is really really good it will last you a long time um for the weight this bike did really well um it is under 27 pounds uh, with, if you're if, without pegs, it would be under 27 pounds. Um, and so I gave it a three out of four for weight. So overall, this bike got a 6.8 out of 10. And, uh, so th that's, that scores, uh, comp is that score is comparable to the, um, fit STR. However, I want to say if you want a bike that's better quality, this bike is actually better quality. The reason the Fit STR scored the same as this is because it already had um, Flatland specific, uh, some more Flatland specific parts. It had all four pegs on it. Um, and then also the geometry, I think was a, it was a little bit better for Flatland, but this this bike the kink switch is actually better in quality than the fit str so here's a good example of a bike that's technically better and for street it would score a lot better but for flatland it scores the same so this bike is on sale for 479 dollars at a website called bikesonline.com I have, I don't know how reputable they are, but that's the cheapest price I found for $79.99. And I would say at that price, it's well worth it. Um, if you're going to be paying the full price for it, which I think is around 600 or maybe even six, 
uh, maybe even under just under 700. I don't know. I, I would go for something else. But at 479.99, I think this is a really, really good deal. OK, let's take a look at the last bike on this list, and it is the We the People Trust Free Coaster. This is a really, really cool bike, guys. Um, let's just walk through the categories. First off, let's look at the flat. Uh, look, let's look at how it scores with flatland friendly components. Um, it didn't actually do so well because it doesn't have front brakes, doesn't have a gyro, um, it doesn't have skinny tires. It's got two pakes. That's the only thing it has going for it with that. So it scored a two out of seven there. Now you have to keep in mind you might not want brakes. You might not care for a gyro. And all you might want to do is add two more pegs, and there you go. You can ride flatland with this bike. The drivetrain scores full points, seven out of seven. It's got a free coaster hub. It's got shorter cranks, um, so it's going to be great there. Full points. For geometry, this bike scored pretty good, not amazing. The standover height is nine inches, so that's a little taller than I'm looking for with a flatland bike. The top tube is 20.75 inches, which is just outside of what I would consider conducive for flatland. I'm looking for something 20.5 inches or lower, so it didn't get the extra points for that. However, the offset on the forks is nice and steep okay for a for a street bike and it's going to also be fine for flatline i believe it's 15 millimeter offset on the forks those are that's going to be great the head tube angle is nice and steep for flatland um, and the chain stay is nice and short as well i believe it's a 12.7 or 12.75 something like that um, so that's going to be great for flatland nice and snappy and the bars are also above nine inches. So that's great for flatland. Okay, now where this bike really shines is in its quality section. It kills it, absolutely kills it with quality. Um, so I actually have to give this bike extra points for that because it's got full foam molly, uh, frame, forks, bars, double wall rims, front and back, um, at least to my knowledge, um, it does. Someone could fact check me on that and see if they can get more information because it doesn't specify um, where where I could find it, but I'm pretty sure it's got double wall winds front, front and back. It's got uh, full chromoly bars, chromoly fork, uh, searing bear sealed bearings front and rear. And here's where it gets extra credit. It's got 48 spline cranks. This bike is the only one out of the four that I'm, I've been uh, rated rated for you guys that has 48 spline cranks, which are the more expensive cranks. Okay, if you go online and try and buy 48 spline cranks, um, they are usually in the $150 price range and can go even much more expensive than that. So for quality, I'm giving this a 12 out of 10. Uh, because it just went above and beyond for the quality. For weight, this bike is under 27 pounds uh, without pegs, which is the way that I am rating the weight on these bikes. And so uh, because of that, it gets a three out of four uh, points for that. So it in total, this bike scored a 8.3 out of 10 for Flatland, okay? So this is the highest scoring bike so far with an 8.3 out of 10. And at its full price, I don't know if it's such a great deal, but I think you guys are catching on. I'm looking for the deals, okay? All these bikes that I've recommended to you are bikes that I have found on sale. And so that's what I'm looking for because I like deals. Right now it is on sale at Dan's Comp for $580.99. And that's 30% off. So if you can get it for that price and you want just like the best quality, this is it. Um, this is a really cool bike and you could buy it, buy two, get two more pegs and start 
shredding flat land on it. And this bike would last you a really, really long time. So guys, thank you so much for joining on another episode of Flatland Journey with me and my little son, Jason. And I will see you guys next time. And I'm going to put the links for all these bikes for where I found them uh, in the description. So if you wanted to uh, find these deals, just look in the description and find the link. I'll see you guys next time on another episode of Flatland Journey.